It's a beautiful day, so I was gonna come out and show you updated construction. Slow. This is going to be um, part of the office. But yeah, we're still, still in the works, but I wanted to show you something better. Here are the sheepies. And look at our little babies. Hi, girls. We got lots of little babies. Little ladies. Hi. It's a little windy, so hopefully you can hear me. Hi, sugar. Hi. All our babies are doing great. Oh, that one's going to town on some milk. electrolytes he's been drinking these since you he was like what one and a half he started drinking he called it data water because Ken always had a cup with electrolytes in it so he's drank these from a very early age potassium sodium and magnesium sweetened with stevia they have all kinds of different flavors <laughs> as usual element will send you a free sample pack it comes with eight different flavors with any purchase all you have to do is go to the link in the description hey, i'll put it on the screen too to okay and you can try them for yourself find out what your favorite is thanks to element for sponsoring this video so i took the camera over there and showed everybody the mm. sheep and the new lambs what updates do you have? Because I don't really take care of the sheep. That's <clears throat> his baby. I just enjoy their being here and the cute little lambs. But I don't really do anything with them. So You take care of the chickens and you're going to be the 
I'm queen bee I'm when we mama. get beehives. Yeah, we we're gonna get beehives for pollination. It's supposed to help really diver diversify your farm and make the pastures really nice for the sheep. Oh, yeah. So the ram I showed him. I'm. Do you have a name for him? I call him Big Boy. What do you Hercules. Call him? Hercules. Because he cleaned house. Okay, yeah. so when we let's tell this story because they don't know. I haven't told this story publicly. <laughs> It's not funny, but it, it's, I mean, it's a very, um, funny, ironic. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy yeah. story. So, so we had about 25 ewes and one grown ram who was doing a good job taking care of business. And a local rancher kept trying to sell me a Katahdin ram and we have St. Croix. And I've been reading that it's really good to mix them because it makes them more robust and they have a bigger carcass size. So more meat. And uh, anytime I think you can diversify genetics, I think that's probably a good thing. So he wanted too much, and I kept telling him no. And finally, he came down to a very reasonable price. And I'm like, sure, bring your ram. So he brings the ram. I pay him the money, put the ram in with the flock. And I'm out uh, cutting trees, creating civil pasture. And he didn't even tell me we were getting this ram. This guy just pulls into the driveway with this massive ram in the back. So they yeah. go and they put him in the pasture. And then... So I, I look around and there's a sheep rolling on its back like a horse, which I've never seen him do before. So I walk over there and it's my, my ram. And he can't get up. And I'm like, what is going on here? And I keep watching him and messing with him. And he keeps moving less and less and less. And then he dies. And so... I assume that they got in a fight, but literally within 10 minutes of putting the new ram in the pasture, my old ram's on his back. And I mean, so, he calls me and he's like, I think our ram is dead. And I was like, what do you mean you think he's dead? He's like, he's moving a little, but he's moving less and less. And yeah. I was like, are you kidding me? Like yeah. that other one's been in there. It was literally 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And so I called the processor and tell him I've watched him die. And so they, I take him out there. <laughs> And in, in moving him out of the truck, they're like, oh, his neck's broke to pieces. Like his neck is shattered. And so literally within 10 minutes of being introduced, Hercules had killed my old perfectly fine ram and was now the dominant male. Anyway, so and so we have a, a freezer full of ram meat. We actually just ate some. It yeah, was really good. It was good. really good. He was two years old. And so he obviously wasn't castrated and he was just a ram. And a lot of people say, oh, you can't eat rams or whatever. It was good. So uh, Melissa, I don't know if she wrote the recipe down, but she it was braised and mm. I, I, it was really tender and mm -hmm. fatty, surprisingly fatty. Yep. And uh, our, all of our sheep are 100% grass-fed. Grass -fed. They never get grain or any other supplementary feed. So he got fatty like that. Yeah, just, just off of grass. Just on grass and weeds. Which was impressive. I, yeah. I, I thought it was one of uh, the, the lamb meat that we had purchased before we had lambs. That's how mild the taste was. How not, but I couldn't believe how much fat was on there. It was mm -hmm. a lot. So we, like, we, it was a bunch of different cuts. It was the necks. Uh, there was a uh, shoulder, shoulder shank. shank. It was bunch and it was just all in one pot, but man, it was yeah. so freaking. It's now gone. Yeah, it was gone pretty quickly. Yeah. So we're getting some more sheep from Greg JD. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So yep. these are like primo sheep. Grass fed, never wormed, uh, no grain ever. They know they're trained to hot wire, so they're not going to try to get out. And I'm, I'm picking up 20 uh, bread ewes from Greg Judy in March. Yeah, and he ultrasounds them, so like they're yeah. confirmed that they're carrying babies. So we're getting effectively more than 20 yeah. sheep because they're baby on board. Yeah, either sheep. singleton or twin, maybe triplets, but... They're ewes, they're all females. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's exciting. Somebody, I posted a picture on Facebook. And somebody's like, that's a lot of sheep. What are you going to do with all of them? I was like, eat them? Eat them or sell them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe eventually we'll sell off a few. But for right now, we're just, yeah. instead of keeping meat in the freezer, we're keeping it on, the, on yeah. the farm. And it's actually, a would never thought of it before, but I think it's very sexy to store your meat in the pasture. Yeah. I think that's brilliant. I love that. Because yeah. it's like literally, it takes no electricity, no inputs. They just eat grass and make meat and that's it. So yeah. if you've got the land, you need some livestock. And it's not as hard as you would think it is if you do it the 
Greg Judy way and you wrote so we rotate pastures they don't stay in the same pasture it's regenerative farming and there's a method to it and yeah. that's why they don't have to be wormed is because they're not standing in the same spot over and over and over again and eating their own poo and like all that stuff it's and I'll give you a good example uh, a lot of ranchers will take the rams out at a certain time of year so that you don't have winter lambs <laughs> because you tend to lose more because it's very cold uh, Supposedly. And if you have to help them, then you're out there in the cold. And this year I just did an experiment because Tennessee winters are normally mild. Normal. And so I left the ram in. And so we recently had a cold snap where it got, the wind chill factor was 20 below for what, four days? At least four days. And that that was the time that the ewes decided to start dropping lambs. No, we had four. We had four lambs at the beginning of the 20 below zero cold snap. And I was like, well, here we go. Never it's either make it or break it. And we did not lose a single lamb. I did not do anything. They did their own thing out in the pasture. We checked on them, obviously. Yeah, I would check on them, but, and all of them are great. They're, they're vigorous. They're, they're thriving. thriving. I and think they got bigger faster. It, it seems Doesn't like it, it? does Yeah. Either that or they're, they fluffed up really quickly. Maybe. Because they're, they look amazing. We didn't lose a single lamb. And so I'm probably not going to take the rams out. Uh, I'm going to leave them in let them just make babies when they want to make babies unless it ever becomes a problem and that that just saves another step mm -hmm. so often you assume oh you've got to do this and this and you got to have a barn we don't have a barn by the way well we have a, we have a shed we yeah but but the sheep are we, never in the we barn. have a barn we yeah. do but the sheep are never in it right they are always out in the pasture yeah and but a lot of people think that falsely that that's necessary and I think in every walk of life, you need to reevaluate everything you think you know and everything you think you believe. Is that, is that really necessary or is that baloney? We haven't lost any babies. We haven't lost any mamas. It's been good. Yeah. I'm sure, I mean, we've had some hiccups along the way, but this year has been really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm in love with the sheep. I can't wait till we have four or 500 head. We don't have the land for that. <laughs> yeah. <Yet. laughs> Beckett. What's your favorite animal on the farm? I love all of the farm sheep. You love all the farm animals and the sheep? Yeah, we have hair sheep, so that makes it also, again, much easier to care for them. Yeah, we don't have to do any shearing. No shearing, no tail docking, none of that kind of stuff. I'm a, fr I'm a little <laughs> worried about Beckett getting in there and playing with the sheep, which I think probably is even better for the sheep. I think the less you mess with them. Yeah. the better but we, we do right over there and look at them i don't know that that big gram's in there I no, don't get in there. please don't get in there he scares me. if he catches you not looking he at gets him. all like runny and then looks yeah. at me like he's gonna yeah like yeah. tear my face off him. the guy that man. previously had him would pet him and give him treats and so You're every time you get anywhere near the pasture he comes to you immediately and he's so big and dangerous, I wish he would not do that. I think it's pretty much a good rule of thumb to remember that anytime humans mess with animals too much, we're gonna mess something up. And so I've really tried to take a completely hands-off approach. I protect the sheep from predators and I give them grass and weeds to eat, but otherwise I don't mess with them. I let them do the thing. And, and that may sound in the short term, cold and uncaring in the long term it actually strengthens the the flock strengthens the genetics uh, then the sheep have le less and less things to worry about whereas if i'm out there helping them birth and and giving them all these uh, the, these immunizations and all these antibiotics i'm uh, long term i'm effectively weakening them and it's going to cause more suffering in the long term the more self like we let them be as self-sufficient as they can possibly be yep. but if you know we need to intervene for things that make sense then we do yeah but i it's very hard for me not to get out there and lamb last time when i went except lamb. for when it's cold outside then i don't want to get out there right. and so like you know i worked in labor and delivery so i want to get out there when they're birthing and like be there and i have to like <coughs> remember they don't need me yeah and really you know humans yeah. don't need anybody either except for moral support you know, it's human nature, though, it. to want to do something, we want to fix do. something, want to do, be involved. And yeah. that's the long-term goal is for them to just eat grass and make meat and, and with as little input from us as possible. And that's what we're trying to do. 
wanted to update update everyone on the lambs and the sheep and the turkey and the chickens and everybody's good. See you in the next video. Love you, Maynard.